and we're back. Listen, I just talked to you about uh, getting out to vote, but now I want to show you something in the Word of God. I want to encourage your heart, and I want to bless you with the Word of God. Oftentimes, you've heard me preach at the 8 o'clock hour. I'm on, and I'm, I'm giving that Word to you, and, and those of you who have visited our church know that I love preaching, but the Lord impressed upon my spirit for this coffee with curry. He wanted me to just share a word that will help us, that will strengthen us, and that will, 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 will guide us through what we're going through as a country. And, and the Lord impressed upon my spirit, 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 3. Uh, listen to what the word of the Lord says. It says, Now uh, there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, the famine is in the city and it shall and we shall die. And if we sit here, we shall die. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Verse 5 says, And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians, and when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Verse 6 says, For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses the noise of the great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to attack us. Verse 7 says, therefore, uh, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. I just want to, I, I read that text because I, I want to, talk to you for just a moment from the thought it's going to take your faith to make you whole. It's going to take a step of faith. Given all that's going on in our country, our city, our county, it's going to take a step of faith. Now you can say, Pastor, are you going to tie this into the political arena? Not necessarily, because there are some things you've been asking God for. There are some things you've been hoping that God would do in your life, in your family's life. And, 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 and it just hasn't happened. But God has given you the instructions to, 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 to step out and make it happen. But you've been holding back and you've been saying, not yet the time, one of these old days, I will be able to do it. But if you look at this story as the Lord impressed this upon my spirit, uh, these four leprous men began to talk to themselves. And they began to say to themselves, look, if we sit here, we're going to die. And then I guess it was two others who said, well, if we go into the city where the Syrians are, into their camp, they're going to kill us. But it was the reasoning of them to stay here and do nothing is not what God has called us to do. Our chances are grim on both sides. Our chances are looking bad on both sides. But somewhere in the word of God, it says faith without works is dead. And I don't know if I'm talking to someone uh, today who's trying to make a decision, but hear those words, faith without works is dead. If you want God to do something in your life, if you want God to change the trajectory of your life, you're going to have to do something. It's going to take a step of faith. These four men reasoned among themselves and they began to say look I don't know what's going on in the camp but I do know if we sit here if we stay here there's a 100% chance that we go fade away and die my brother my sister if you sit where you are if you don't move in faith if you don't try God there is a 100% chance that you will not get the miracle, that you will not get blessed, that you will not get healed, that things will not turn in your favor. 
you must step forward and trust God. Every Sunday and every Wednesday, we have 5 a.m. call in prayer and meditation. And for the last few weeks, I've been sharing with them that God is ready to manufacture a miracle for somebody's life. I asked them to put their hands on their head and on their stomachs and not worry about some preacher doing it. I said, you do it. A few days later, I received several emails, several phone calls, even some text messaging saying to me, Pastor, I was obedient and I took the step and God started opening up the fountain. I want to say to you, my brother, my sister, it's going to take a step of faith. You want something from God? You want new leadership? You want things to change in your community? You're going to have to take a step and trust that God knows what he's doing. God has not brought you to this moment just to desert you. As a matter of fact, he got you at this moment. These four men were at that moment so you can reason and see that man's extremity becomes God's opportunity. As I read this story, I, the first thing that came to my mind is you don't have anything to lose. I'm sure you, you, you remember Donald Trump's uh, favorite line, you got nothing to lose. He didn't use exactly that language, but, but I'm going to use it for today. But when it comes down to your faith, trusting God, believing that God knows what he's doing, you have nothing to lose. David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging bread. What is he saying? All of his life, whenever the righteous cried out to God, God always answered. And, and listen, I am a witness and I'm not by myself. You have called out to God and God has answered. You are still here today, not because you've been so good, not because you've been so kind, not because you've been so just and merciful, but because of the grace and the mercy of God. Today, you're going to have to take a step, a step of faith. Showing God, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with the decision that I have to make in order for life to be different. That was the first thing that came out to me that you gonna have you have nothing to lose. Nothing. Let me show you something. Not only do you have nothing to lose, but I was reading in the text. It says when they got there, they found out that all of the Sy Syrians had fled and left everything intact. Listen, brother, God has already made the provisions for you. That's my second point. God has already made the provisions for you. you, you he's waiting for you to take the step. If I have a person out there who's sick, you've received the doctor's report. And the doctor's report looks like it ain't going to happen. Just last week on Coffee with Curry, you had an opportunity to see Sister Tina. The doctors didn't think she would make it past, you know, uh, a year maybe. That would be long. But it's going on too and she's still kicking, still doing well. To God be the glory. God is waiting on you. He's already manufactured the miracle. The miracle has already happened. But what you have to do is you got to trust him. And you got to take that step. When they got there, it was mesmerizing for them to see that everything had been handled. This is what you're going to find out when you get to where God is taking you. That God has already manufactured the miracle. God has already made things happen for you. And what you have to do is make sure you make yourself available to God. I locked, it was another piece in this that, 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 that intrigued me as we're coming to the close of this. In the seventh verse it says, Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. This, they're talking about the Syrians. But it was around the, the um, 
the ninth verse where it says, they, then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a good day of good news, and we remain silent. In other words, God has blessed us so greatly for us to keep this to ourselves, it is a sin. God is ready for himself to get some glory. He can't get glory if you won't take the step for him to give you the miracle so you can share with somebody the goodness of God. We were developed, we were designed to be worshipers, to be praisers, and God is ready to use you. You're the next miracle. You're the next person who God is going to bless. Take these words today and know that it's going to take you stepping out. Stop calling your pastor. Stop calling the prayer warriors. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to get up and say, God, I trust you. Because listen, without you making a step, prayers of others won't help you. It is your faith that will make you whole. So on today, as we've trusted God, I want you to stand firm. I want you to believe God. And I want you to stand in his word. He is a great God. I pray for you. You continue to pray for me. Because when we pray for each other, we become stronger. But do not just pray. I want you to get up and do something. Our community needs you. You are the answer to the prayers that many are praying. Don't sit back and wait for yourself. I want you to stand up and be counted as one who believed and trusts God. And that's all I want to share for today. We'll be right back.